So we have this question right here. The surface tension y of a liquid depends on the density rho, acceleration of gravity g, and the height h. Use the method of dimensions to derive the actual relationship between these quantities. I will attempt to summarize the question this way. We have the surface tension y. So it's the surface tension y. Um, it's of liquid. It's going to depend on density. So meaning that this surface tension is depending on the density of the liquid we are calling rho. Density, the acceleration due to gravity g, g, and the height h, and then the height h. Use the method of dimensions to derive the actual relationship. So this surface tension is depending on this. So we shall call this density is to the power x, this g is to the power y, and h is to the power z. And now our work here, to find the relationship that exists between this surface tension and these parameters is we are going to find the values of x, y, and z. So let's get started with the working. So to remove this constant of proportionality, we shall say our surface tension y is equal to let's call our constant of proportionality k times the density to the power x g to the power y h to the power z now we need to find the dimensions of this of the dimensions of the surface tension should be equal to now the constants do not have dimensions so we shall leave that as that Multiply that by the dimensions of density to the power x, the dimensions of gravity to the power y, the dimensions of height to the power z. So let's go and first find the dimensions of each parameter one by one. So let's begin with y. y is surface tension. Now, we know of surface tension from definition, it is the force per unit length. From the definition, I'm getting this from the definition of surface tension. So if it's force per unit length, that is the definition of surface tension, the dimensions for force are, force, we know force is mass times acceleration, divide that by the length. And so we know that mass is capital M, acceleration is L t to the power negative 2, divide that by the length, which is capital L. So it means that here the dimensions of surface tension are capital M t to the power negative 2, because this L and that L cancel out. So those are the dimensions of surface tension. Let's go ahead and find the dimensions of density. So the dimensions of density, we know that density is mass over volume. We know that mass is capital M, that's mass, divide that by volume, is L to the power 3, that is giving us M, L to the power negative 3. So those are the dimensions of density. So let's go ahead and find the dimensions of gravity. Of course, the dimensions of gravity are straightforward. Of course, acceleration, that is L, T to the power negative 2. Then, of course, when it comes to height, the dimensions for height are L. It's just the length. So after finding all those dimensions, what we are going to do now is to simply go ahead and substitute them in our earlier expression. So in this case here, we are going. We, so in this case, we are going to come here and say where the, the dimensions of y are this. So we are going to say m t to the power negative two is going to give us a dimensionless constant k. Multiply that by the dimensions of density, which is this. So we shall say this is m l to the power negative 3, close brackets. Um, that is to the power x. Multiply that by the gravity. For gravity, it is that. So we shall come here and say it is l t to the power negative 2. 
that is the power y, multiply that by h, which so happens to be L to the power z. So this will continue. We shall say it's going to become mt to the power negative 2 is going to be equal to, this is a dimensionless constant k, and so now here it becomes m to the power x, l to the power negative 3x, multiply that by here is l to the power y and then t to the power negative 2y then here we have l to the power z so we shall continue here by saying now we re we should should i call it collect like terms we clamp the values of m alone the values of l alone and the values of t using our laws of indices so we shall say here m t to the power negative 2 is going to be equal to the r dimensionless constant then we have m here we only have one m so i shall say it is m to the power x then what about l i have three l's and they are multiplied it is l to the power something times l to the power y times l to the power z and we know from law of indices when the bases are the same we add the power so it means it's going to be here l to the power negative 3x right there and then l this is plus y then that is plus z that is l for you then we have t to the power negative 2y so it's going to become cap t to the power negative 2y so from here we are going to compare the powers on both sides the powers of m this side and the powers of m that side so when you look at the powers of m here the powers of m on both sides of the equation you find that the power of m here is 1 so we shall say 1 is equal to the power of m this side is x and that's our first equation of course this one directly tells us that x is equal to 1 then we go ahead and find, compare the powers of t on both sides. The power of t here, the power of t here is negative 2, so I shall say negative 2 is going to be equal to the power of t this side is negative 2y. Negative 2y. Of course, even this one, if we to continue, divide both sides by negative 2, by negative 2, we shall end up with our value of y as 1. So let's go ahead and find L, the powers of L. So you'll find that the powers of L this side, we do not have any L this side, so it means it's going to become 0. It's going to be equal to, what are the powers of L this side? We have negative 3x plus y plus z. So this is going to become negative 3x plus y plus z. But then here we have 0 is going to be equal to negative 3x. We already have x as 1. So this is going to become negative 3 times 1, which is negative 3, plus y. Our value of y is 1, so it's going to become plus 1, then plus z. So in this case, we shall go on and it becomes negative 2 plus z is equal to 0. So it means our value of z is positive 2. So here we have found our value of x, we have found our value of y, we have found our value of 2. So borrowing from our very, uh, very first expression, this is our very first expression. So we shall go ahead and say, we said that y is equal to k times density to the power x, gravity to the power y, h to the power z. And from our findings, we discovered that surface tension is going to be equal that surface tension is going to be equal to k times density to the power x what's the value of x is one so it is density multiply that by gravity to the power y y is one times gravity times h h is two and using dimensions we have now found the relationship between those two and that is the answer